Hello, my name is Jerry and you're watching 3DHP. And I'm back with another video. On today's video, I'd like to talk about the Ender 3 version 2 that I got last week. I've been printing like crazy on it day and night, printing all kinds of cool things. And I'd like to share some of them with you and tell you about my experiences. All these things I have to show you today, I printed with a Corality Slicer that came on the SD card with the Ender 3 V2. I've used Simplify 3D for over three years now. I've never in the past ever tried to cure, uh, make any other slicer. I haven't tried any of them. But I figured if a new person wants to buy this printer and know totally nothing about 3D printing, could they print great prints like this? Yes, they can. And I loaded the software on it. I updated the software. And without even looking at the instruction book to tell me what to do next, I was able to get great prints. The only thing I changed on some of them, I, I decreased the size or I increased the size and I changed the infill. I think it was preset to 20 and I dropped it down to 4 or 5%. That's the only thing I changed. Slice the model. I did hook up Octoprint. I have Octoprint that I have on all my pies on most of my printers. So I used Octoprint to load the file. But for a new person, you simply put it on your SD card, pop it in the printer, go to the screen, you hit print, the print button, you pick the file and boom, you go. It's that easy. It was very simple to use. I didn't go in and try to tweak any software. You see so many people on Facebook groups and different places that are having problems with their friends and they're changing settings and asking for advice. Straight out of the box, this thing works like a champ. And I'm sure all the enders are the same way with all, all the versions that came out with the reg render, the pro, and then this one. And I have the pro and I have some reg renders. that They all print great. They're all great printers. And this one has a lot of extra bells and whistles, 32-bit board, and it's really cool for the price. So I think it's got a lot of cool features. Anyway, so I've got the Poet, that's enough of me Gavin. i got the Poet's base here, which is very nice. It's in yellow PETG. And I've got a Flexi Cat that I printed here. It's really cool. Got this file off Thingiverse. And I printed this with uh, no wrap or anything. And once the bed completely cooled down, it simply lifted off the bed. And here's another one here I can show you real quick. You flip the camera over. To show you how easy things come off. That quick. The bed, bed cooled down almost all the way and it just pulled off. And as far as for stringing on PETG, I have one string here. And that was the uh, purge line printed. That was the only thing string. This yellow PETG had no issue with stringing anywhere. Came out great. Very excellent. This build service they all have on here works great. Uh, some PET does string more than others. I have quite a different, a few different types that I got from uh, Sunloo. I have black and white, and then I have quite a bit that I bought from Ziltec. And some PETG does string more than others, depending on the color I found. Moving on, I've got a Klein bottle here. I don't know why it's called a Klein bottle. This was on the SD card from Corality. It kind of looks like a Hershey's Kiss with a handle on it. And this is printed in Arion Silk Bronze or Copper. One side has a sticker that says Silk Bronze, the other side says Copper. So it's one or the other, but that came out really nice. Then I have a little vase here that was really big on the SD card. Uh, when I put it in Cura, really, the file was really big. When I put it in Cura, so I shrunk it down. And this is a copper filament. Came out really nice. Or Silk Bronze, whichever you want to call it. I did not print this in base mode, so it's a little thicker than normal. As where, when I done this Poets base and PETG, this is base mode. Real flexible. And what else do we got here? The heart box. Or no, the owl. Okay, and then I've got this owl. This was on the SD card. I made it, I don't remember if this was the original size. Yeah, I think this was the original size of it. And this is made it, it's printed with 3D Soltech C3 Green PLA. Came out really nice. I've seen quite a few people online print these really big in rainbow. Well, I'm out of rainbow filament at the moment, so when I get more of this owl, it would look really cool in rainbow. This came out really nice. Texture very nice. I don't have any layer line issues. Came out really good. No supports. You can see a few little strings whisked down here, like string, strings on it. But that's normal on the bottom of the points, but there's no damage on this whatsoever. When I have a little maze box here that I printed, I increased the size on this. And of course, when it completely cooled down on the bed, it came off very easy. That printed very nice. There's no layer lines, no flaws. I can't see anything wrong with this at all. There's no ghosting, anything like that. 
And what else we got? And the heart box. Got a little pretty heart box here I printed for my wife. This was on SD card. Got a nice little lid. I printed it one by another on the bed. No supports. Had no problem with adhesion. Came out real pretty. And then I've got a recorder. I call it a flute, but in, in school kids have these. Most of you remember you had a little recorder, a little bit shorter than this, I believe. I think they were kind of an off-white in color. So I printed this. I sized this up quite a bit. <laughs> anyway, um, when I first started printing this, I was printing it a lot smaller, and I didn't have a skirt or anything on it. And on these sections here, I made a boo-boo. I never put a skirt on it, and there's almost zero contact with the bed. There's very little surface area here. So I'll pull up a picture here on the screen. Uh, I had some stringing and knocked two of them over, and I caught it about an hour later, and I was starting to make a mess. So I had to go back in and re-slice the model and put a skirt on it. But anyway, it prints in different sections here. There's four different sections that, you, that prints out. And what's next? Quake. This they call Quake on the file. This is Forge Hammer, in my opinion, but they call it Quake on Crowley's SD card. This is prints in three pieces, and then you can glue it together. This is printed to point two. Everything here was printed to point two layer height, by the way. And this came out really nice, really cool. And this is uh, Arion Silk Blue PLA. Printed very nice. No issues with it whatsoever. And let's see, I did have supports on the end of it here. I had some supports I put on it. There's a little overhang. I figured I might screw it up, so I went in and put some supports there. I let the cure auto add automatically have the supports, and I put a few right here, which I didn't need on both sides. And then I have a monkey jar here, monkey cup, whatever you want to call it. It's not really tall enough to be a vase. That's also printed in uh, Arion Silk Blue PLA. Came out really nice. I believe my infill on this was 5 or 6%. All my print temperatures on PETG on this printer were 235C, and then on the bed there were 80C. All my PLA temperatures were 200C and 60C. I typically, with all my printers, for the last three years or so, I've been printing all my PLA at 210. But since uh, the Crowley slicer was defaulting to 200, I just left it alone. I didn't want to go in and make a bunch of tweaks, like I said, as if I was a new person using this for the first time. I didn't want to go in and modify anything, like I said, other than uh, infill or size. That's the only thing that I changed. And then loaded everything on my uh, on uh, Octoprint and then printed it that way. And then I left a couple lights in there all night so I could sit there and tape it. But here's all the different filaments I use. My green 3D Soltec and then Arion Silk Bronze, Arion Silk Blue, Arion Sparkly Blue, and then Ziltec. Uh, What's it called? Orange soda. That's a really pretty color. It almost looks like a transparent. Really beautiful. And then I've got the yellow too. The yellow area on his back there on the school. I'd like to talk about build surfaces for a minute. This textured surface that came on this blast bed from Corality, it works great. I've had not I've had not one issue with it in probably the last seven days. Everything has worked fine. But if you should decide you ever want to replace it, you simply take off the clip in the front and the clip in the back. There's an aluminum plate underneath. If you want to go to something that's really cool, on most of my printers, I have a flex sheet. An easy flex sheet that came from TH3D Studios here in the USA. It's this a textured PEI sheet, which works great for everything. If you have the right temperature setting, almost anything will stick to it. And then on the other side, on my CR10, I have a sheet of PEI that I apply to it. So I have PEI on one side, which most things stick to, and then I've got a textured sheet on the other. To apply it, you simply take your magnet that comes with it, which is a, it's 3M, made by 3M, the adhesive on it's made by 3M, which is, you know, it sticks really well. You simply put that on the bed, start back in one corner, slowly stick it, making sure you don't get double, bubbles in it. You smooth it out as you come forward. Take your flex plate, line it up, stick it on it, boom, you're done, ready to print. Of course, you have to re-level your bed because of the difference in thickness, you'll have to re-level the bed. But these things work really well. I have a hypercube here printing right now, working on a project, and I have a uh, blue mat on it from TH3D, which is like this, and they work really well. And I'm putting a flex sheet on this that I've already got sitting behind the camera, and I'll be popping off the flex sheet. I'll, put, I'll either put a blue mat on it 
or a big texture sheet on it, one or the other, or I go texture to PEI. So anyway, a lot of great products, but my personal recommendation, like I say, is to use this until you wear it out, and then when you wear out this or nothing sticks to it anymore, then change it out to something different like a flex mat. Here's a noise comparison I forgot to do in the first video of a stock Ender 3 versus Ender 3 V2. Take a listen. So no matter what printer you decide to buy, whether it be the Ender 3 Pro or this version, they're both great printers. Um, this costs a little more money. It's got a lot of cool little features. It's a little more polished. It comes with the 32-bit board. I think it's awesome. Um, yeah, it's a great little printer for the price. But like I say, if you don't want to spend the extra money, get the Pro. The Pro has a mean little power supply. It's superior over the first Ender 3, which I have two of those also. They all print great. And this one straight out of the box with the Creality Slicer, it works great. I've had no issues with it. And if you're a new person buying this or seeing this video, it's very easy to set up. Anybody can set it up uh, and be printing in an hour or two. Um, and your print quality should be flawless like these prints are. Like I said, I've never used Cura before and not, everything was fine. It, it, everything worked out great. Print quality was great. And not all filaments and not all PETGs are the same depending on the company and uh, the color. Colors matter a lot. When I first got into printing, I bought a ton of Hatchbox before I ever received my first CR10, and some colors weren't print nearly as good as others. So over time, you tend to learn what color works better than another or what brand might be better than another. Sometimes a company might have a bad batch of filament that gives you problems, and then you want to hate it and run away from it, but that was just a fluke. It's kind of like foods. You know, you try the wrong product from some place. You don't want to try that food again. But, you know, it all depends how it's prepared, which is kind of unrelated to what I'm saying, talking about food. But anyway, yeah, and then I got the cat here. The little cat came out really cool. The cat and the dog from Crowley. Those were my test prints that I did. The dog is really tiny. I didn't increase the size. That's just how they were. The G-code file was ready to go on the card. Um, what color was that? That was a silk blue PLA from Arion. But, yeah, it printed really nice. No issues whatsoever with any of this. So I hope you liked the video today. I got a lot of goodies here to show you. Typically in videos past, if you, you know, you've seen some of my videos in my room, I typically print in gray or, or white. I prime everything and then I eventually paint it. It usually doesn't get painted, but the ones I do paint, I don't sit there and print little toys in all different colors. I typically don't buy multi, multiple colored filaments to print things like this, but I'm, you know, you're printing up one thing, then you want to start doing something different and get into a different area, and, you know. I've got enough of one thing, so it's time to do different things. So these look really cool. And I got a little mini Chris right here. This is, uh, that was printed on, uh, what was it? Um, 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 Tivo Tarantula Pro, this little mini Chris here in PLA. And then I've got a mini Joel here too. Got that file off of Thingiverse, I think it was. Came out really nice. But that's unrelated to this printer today. So uh, please like and subscribe, share the video. Hit that bell to be notified next time I do a live stream or uh, post another video. I really appreciate everybody coming by. And I, if you have any comments or suggestions, suggestions please leave them below. And uh, take care, everybody, and happy printing.